All right. Thank you, Lord. So, so we, were, we were talking about how the Father and the Son have multiple names. پس داشتیم در مورد این صحبت می‌کردیم که چطور پدر و پسر اسم‌های متفاوتی دارن. Because they are revealing multiple operations of the Father and the Son. چون دارن عملکردهای مختلف خودشون رو نشون میدن. Multiple uh, descriptions because, because one name is not enough. به خاطر اینکه یک اسم کافی نیست برای اینکه بخواد توصیف بکنه اون شخصیت رو. And so what we're going to see is that the sevenfold spirit of God پس می‌خوایم در مورد هفت روح خدا صحبت بکنیم. Hopefully we'll have time for this. امیدوارم که وقت داشته باشیم واسه این. But there are three dimensions of it. سه تا بود هست در این هفت روح. One is one dimension is that they are seven distinct functions of the Holy Spirit. یه بودش اینه که هفت در واقع عملکرد متفاوت وجود داره. Seven operations of the Holy Spirit. هفت نوع عملکرد and we'll describe what they are in a little bit. The second dimension is that we'll see that there are angels angels who carry those virtues of the Holy Spirit. Some believe that there are seven specific angels assigned to each of the seven spirits of God. خاص هستن که برای اون هفت عملکرد خاص انتخاب شدن یا استفاده میشن. And, and we'll talk about that later. که در مورد این هم صحبت خواهیم کرد. The third dimension is that these are seven uh, for lack of better words these are seven anointings that rest upon our life. و بخوام توضیح بدیم جور دیگه که این که هفت مسح مختلف که بر روی زندگی های ما هست. Okay. And, and so going back to this description in Revelation chapter 5. حالا برگردیم به این توضیحی که در مکاشفه بود. Seven eyes and seven horns. هفت تا چشم و هفت تا شاخ. Um, this is a description of, of the fullness of the spirit that Jesus carried. این توضیح یک در واقع اون کمال روحی که در عیسی قرار داشت است. Because these are on the lamb. These are on Jesus. به خاطر اینکه اینها میگه بر روی بره بودن. Okay. So seven is a number that means fullness or completion. Haft neshanei kamel budane. All right. So this is a this is a picture of the fullness of the Spirit on Jesus's life. Ba in kamal ruh has ke bar Isa qarar dare. Why seven eyes? Chera halat chahar ta haft ta chesh. Eyes in Scripture um, are symbolic of revelation. چشم در کلام خدا سمبل مکاشفه است. They they represent understanding. درک رو برای ما نشون میده. They represent discernment or revelation. نماینده تشخیص دادنه. So Jesus having seven eyes. پس اینجا وقتی میگه عیسی هفت تا چشم داره. Means that he's walking in total complete understanding در واقع داره میگه که عیسی در یک درک و فهم کامل حرکت میکنه fullness of knowledge and wisdom and discernment در کمال حکمت و دانش seven horns هفت شاخ horns in scripture represent power شاخ در کلام خدا نمایانگر قدرت هست dominion سلطنت کردن، حاکم بودن. They represent strength, قدرت, authority, اقتدار. Okay, and so the fact that Jesus has seven horns means that he's walking in full authority. وقتی میگه عیسی هفت شاخ داره، یعنی که عیسی داره با کمال اقتدار حرکت میکنه. He's walking in full power, با کمال قدرت. In total authority and strength. در کمال قدرت و اقتدار حرکت میکنه. Okay, everybody get that? متوجه شدین؟ All right. Uh, so, so now let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. حالا بریم به اشعیا باب 11. We've been hearing the phrase seven spirits of God. این در مورد این هفت روح خدا هشنیدیم. But what are they? حالا ببینیم اینها چی هستن. And there's only one place that we see in scripture that that connects with the identity of the seven spirits of God. و می‌بینیم که یک جایی هست که به ما نشون می‌ده این connection رو اشعیا 11 
Isaiah chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read these. So Isaiah 11 gives us more insight to the seven horns and the seven eyes. Okay, so the first thing we see here in verse 1, then shall come forth a, a rod or a branch from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, who was Jesse? David's father. So we know that the Messiah must come from the lineage of David. So verse 1 is telling us this is about Messiah. This is about Jesus. And then he says in verse 2 something very interesting. Now we're going to count here together, okay? We read verse 2, you ready? He says here, the Spirit of the Lord. You see that? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now we saw that in Luke 4. We saw that in John 3. The Spirit was upon Jesus without measure. So he says here, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The sevenfold spirit of God. Isaiah 11:2 defines for us what the seven spirits of God are. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, hikmat, and understanding, the spirit of counsel, mashverat, and might, qawwat, the spirit of knowledge, ma'rifat, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. These are the seven spirits of God. These are the seven operations of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Okay. Now, so, so this gives us a description of what is going to rest on Jesus. Because Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus. So this is what's going to rest upon him. This is a more complete picture of the fullness that rested upon Jesus. These are the seven spirits of God. These are the seven lamps of fire. These are the seven horns. These are the seven eyes that have been sent into the earth. It's recorded in Isaiah 11. Amen. Amen. And so, so we'll, we'll kind of discuss these a little bit more in a little bit. But, but see, when Jesus, when the Spirit came upon Jesus, this is what he operated in. These seven spirits of God, these seven operations are another way to say the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Uh, one, of the, one of the ones that it mentions there is the spirit of might. See, this is why sickness had to leave. 
ترک کنه و بره This is why the dead had to be raised برای همین است که مرده باید زنده بشه Because Jesus walked in the fullness of the spirit of might به خاطر اینکه عیسی در اون کمال زندگی می‌کرد Power was present to heal people اون قوت اونجا بود که بخواد مردم رو شفا بده It wasn't he wasn't doing it himself as God. خودش این رو به عنوان خدا انجام نمیداد. What did the book of Acts tell us? اعمال به ما چی میگه؟ He was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit. که با که مس شده بود با خدا از طریق روح. You remember when Jesus knew what people were thinking? میدونید که وقتی که مسیح میدونست که مردم دارن در مورد چی فکر میکنن؟ He knew their thoughts. افکارشون رو میخوند or he knew specific details about their life یا خیلی چیزهای جزئی زندگیشون رو میدونست he knew specific things about people و خیلی چیزهای جزئی رو میدونست در مورد زندگیشون he had understanding of what was in people's hearts and minds در کو فهم اینو داشت که تو ذهنشون داره چه چیزی خطور میکنه یا عبور میکنه از ذهنشون because of the spirit of understanding and the spirit of knowledge به خاطر اینکه اونجا روح معرفت و درک نه حکمت و درک بود See, you remember Jesus said, "I don't do anything unless I first see the Father do it." Isa gaf ke man hech kari nemikonam magar inke bebinam avval pedar dar uno anjam mide. You remember Jesus said that? Ya to miyad ke Isa ino gaf. He said, "I only do what I see the Father do." Man faqat un kari ra anjam midam ke mibinam pedar dar anjam mide. Well, how could he see what the Father was doing? A koja midunas bebine pedar dar chikar mikone? Because Jesus was anointed with the spirit of counsel. Be khater inke Isa mas shude bud ba ruh mashwarat. That was what we saw in Isaiah 11:2. To ye ish ayo ya azdah do mi. That was one of the seven spirits. Ye ki azun haf ruh. The spirit of counsel. Ruh mashverat. He wasn't just doing whatever he felt like doing. Ne mi raf har kari ki delish mi khast ya ehsas mi kad anjam bede. He was receiving counsel from the Father. Dash az khoda mashverat mi giraf az pedar dash mashverat mi giraf. He was receiving direction from heaven. Dash hedayat mi shud az asman. That's how he knew he, he knew if I wait at this well A woman from Samaria is going to come. برای همه میدونست که اگه من اینجا بشینم سر این چاه یک زنی از سامره خواهد اومد. How did he know? از کجا میدونست؟ Why did he send the disciples away? چرا شاگردان رو فرستاده بود؟ Because he knew they weren't ready for her. به خاطر اینکه میدونست که شاگردان هنوز آماده نیستن برای اون. She was Samaritan. به خاطر اینکه این یک زن بود زن سامری بود. She was a woman. یک زن بود. And she had very questionable reputation. و یک چی میگن گذشته خیلی جالبی هم نداشت. And Jesus waits for her. ولی عیسی برای اون انتظار میمونه. How did he know she was going to come to that well? از کجا میدونست که سر چاه میاد؟ Why did she come in the middle of the day? چرا اصلا وسط روح روز این زن اومد سر چاه؟ Because of the shame that she carried. به خاطر اینکه اون خجالتی که براش قرار داشت. People went to the well early in the morning or late in the evening when it was cool. مردم موقعی که صبح زود بود یا مثلا موقع غروب میرفتن که خورده خنک‌تر باشه. But he waits for her. ولی عیسی اونجا در انتظار اون شخص بود. Son of God. پسر خدا. Waiting for a Samaritan? برای یک زن برای یک سامری. Who's a woman? که زن باشه. And who has a very questionable reputation. و خیلی گذشته جالبی هم نداشته باشه. Because heaven showed him. Heaven, he got the counsel of heaven. در انتظار بود چرا چون به خاطر اینکه این مشورت رو از آسمان گرفته بود. And she brings the whole city to Jesus. و بعد این زن کل شهر رو به مسیح میاره. Amen. Amen. That's good news. این خبر خوبه. Doesn't matter where you're from. که مهم نیست که شما از کجا هستی، اهل کجا هستی. Doesn't matter your gender. مهم نیست که زنی یا مردی. And it doesn't matter your past. و اینکه چه گذشته یم داشتی مهم نیست. The Son of God waited in the hot sun. پسر خدا در اون آفتاب داغ ایستاد و منتظر بود. For a person that society exed out. برای شخصی که در واقع مرتد شناخته شده بود از نظر جامعه. Amen. So, so Jesus is casting out demons because of the spirit of might that's on his life. پس عیسی داره دیوها رو بیرون میکنه چرا که روح قوت بر او قرار داره. You remember when he would reveal things or do things and and um, like in Luke 165 it says here that fear came on everyone در لوقا باب یک میگه که یک ترسی بر همگان آمد. Luke 5 says the people were all amazed. در لوقا 5 میگه که همه توی تعجب بودن. You know, in other words, there was a shock and awe effect. همه در واقع توی تعجب و شوکه بودن. 
when he would speak or when he would do miracles وقتی که صحبت میکرد و یا اینکه یک معجزه ای رو انجام میداد there was a shock and awe یک شوکه یک چیز شوکه آور برای اون جماعت بود and that was the fear of the lord و این ترس خداوند بود are you with me آیا با من هستید okay So, so now let's let's look at something here. Does it, everybody understand? I, I'm going to go into more detail, but I want you just to get an idea here. همه تو متوجه هستید وارد جزیات خواهم شد ولی میخوام اون ایده ای درستش رو بگیرید. If I ask you, what are the seven spirits of God? اگه از شما بپرسم که هفت روح خدا چی هست? What are you going to say? چی میگین؟ Are they getting it? Yeah. Yeah. And how? And where are you going to find it? Where are you going to find the seven spirits of God? کجا میتونید این هفت روح خدا رو پیدا کنین؟ Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's all he's all right here. Yeah, he's getting it. But okay, now, now, where are you going to find it in scripture? حالا حالا در کلام خدا کجا پیداش میکنیم؟ Isaiah 11. All right, Isaiah 11:1 and 2. اشعیا 11:1 یک و دو. So so let's look at this. Let's look at these seven lamps of fire. حالا بیایم به این هفت مشعل نگاه کنیم. Okay. Now because this is one of the descriptions given to to the seven spirits of god چون این یکی از اون آیه هاست که در مورد هفت روح خدا صحبت میکنه where in scripture do we see seven lamps of fire حالا در کلام خدا کجا میبینیم هفت مشعل رو we see it Right? Okay. I was running out of room, sorry. Mm-hmm. All right. Seven lamps of fire. Haft mash'al ya shole ya atishi. And you can find this in Exodus 25. Dar khuruj bab 25. And also in Exodus uh 36 37 37 37 All right. Now, now let me let me explain this. In, in the Old Testament God spoke to Moses. And he spoke to him to build a tabernacle. و باش صحبت میکنه که بخواد اون خیمه ملاقات رو بنا بکنه. And there were several different pieces of, of furniture or seven things that were in and around the tabernacle. و هفت uh, چیز یا وسایل بود که دور و بر اون خیمه عبادت بود. One of them was the lampstand. یکی از اون چیزها اون شمدان بود. Okay. Uh, it was also called the menorah. Some people call it the menorah. I don't know. If it... and, and in Exodus 25, the Lord says there, He says, You will make a lampstand of pure gold. He says, It'll be of, of hammered work. The center branch or the center shaft, the center piece. And the six branches. So, so, so the center piece was the main part. And then it had six branches. Okay, these were the branches. And, and on the branches were um, three things, mostly three things. There was, um, oh gosh, there's a lot. <laughs> all right, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, but they, they had designs all on the branches. Okay. And, and he says in verse 30, he says in, in Exodus 25, 37, he says you'll make seven lamps for it. Okay. Now, so, so the Lord, and, and then the Lord tells Moses, he says, I want you to make these lamps in such a way that 
that when they burn, they're going to they're going to give light to what's in front of it. خدا به موسی میگه جور این شمدان رو درست بکن یا این چراغدان رو درست بکن که وقتی که نور میدن نور رو به طرف جلو بدن. So the lamp stand was one thing. پس این چراغدان خودش یک چیز بود. And then they would put these these Uh, lamps on top of the lamp stand. و این در واقع شعله ها رو بر روی اون قرار میداشت قرار میدادن. And they positioned the lamps in such a way that the fire in the lamp would light whatever was in front of the lamp. و این چراغا رو یک جوری باید میذاشتن که وقتی که اینا روشن میشد در واقع جلو رو روشن میکرد. So so the lamp stand was was God told Moses specifically how to build the lamp stand. خب این چراغدان رو خدا بهش کاملا با جزئیات به موسی میگه که چجوری درستش بکنه. And I want you to write this down. من می‌خوام اینو بنویسین. The lamp stand این چراغدان was designed by God با از طرف خدا طراحی شده بود to carry the seven lamps of fire. که بخواد این هفت شعله رو در واقع حمل بکنه. The lamp stand چراغدان was designed by God از طرف خدا طراحی شده بود to carry the seven lamps of fire که بخواد هفت چراغ رو حمل بکنه okay so the so what are the seven lamps of fire حالا این هفت چراغ چی هست هفت چراغ چی هستن what are they این هفت مشعل یا شعله they are the seven spirits of God هفت روح خدا است The seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. و اون هفت چراغی که در کنار تخت هستند. Are the seven spirits of God. همون هفت روح خدا هستند. Okay. And and the lamp stand. و چراغدان is designed to carry the seven lamps of fire. جور طوری طراحی شده که بخواد اون هفت چراغ رو حمل بکنه. So the question is, what's the lamp stand? حالا سوال اینه که این چراغدان چی هست؟ We, we میدونیم که این هفت شعله چیه؟ The seven lamps are the fullness of the Holy Spirit. خب اینا کمال روح القدس هستن. The seven lamps are the seven spirits of God. این هفت شعله این هفت روح خدا هستن. But these are not these are put on top of the lamp stand. ولی اینها بر روی یک چراغدانی قرار گرفته شده. So the question we have now is what's the lamp stand? حالا سوال ما اینه که این چراغدان چیه؟ هنوز جواب ندید. جواب ندید. What the question now is what is the lamp stand? و سوال اینه که این چراغدان چیه؟ Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. مکاشفه 1 20 Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. مکاشفه 1 آیه 20. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand. راز آن هفت ستاره که در دست راست من دیدی. And the seven golden lampstands. و راز آن هفت چراغدان تلا. So so John saw seven stars. پس یوحنا اینجا هفت ستاره می‌بینه. And he saw seven lampstands. و هفت چراغدان تلا. And the Lord is going to explain to him what they are. و خدا داره بهش میگه که حالا اینا چی هستن. He says the seven stars are the se- are the angels of the seven churches. خدا بهش میگه که هفت ستاره فرشتگان هفت کلیسایند. And the seven lampstands و آن هفت چراغدان are what? چی? The seven churches. همان هفت کلیسا. What is the lampstand? چراغدان چیه؟ It's the church. Kelisast. The lampstand. Cheraqdan is you. Shoma astit. You were designed by God. Shoma tarrahish. Shuda az taraf Khoda hastit to carry the seven lamps of fire. Ke bekhayit un haft shola ro hamel bokonit. You were designed by God. شما با خدا از طرف خدا طراحی شدید. To carry the seven spirits of God. که بخواید این هفت روح خدا را حمل بکنید. The lampstand, چراغدان is a prophetic picture. یک تصویر نبوتی of the church as کلیسا. The lampstand is a prophetic picture of you. این چراغدان یک تصویر نبوتی از شماست. And that God has designed you to carry the fullness of the Spirit. 
اون کمال روح رو حمل بکنید. Did you get that? آیا متوجه شدید؟ Holy Spirit help us. Holy Spirit help us کمک کن. Help us to, to get this. که بتونیم درک کنیم و بفهمیم. The church is designed to carry the sevenfold spirit of God. که کلیسا طراحی شده که بخواد اون هفت روح خدا را حمل بکنه. We were fashioned. ما درست شدیم. We were fashioned and created. و خلق شدیم. To to display the fullness of the spirit. که بخوایم نمایانگر اون کمال روح خدا باشیم. See, I was always taught that the the lampstand. همیشه من فکر می کردم که چراغدان represented the Holy Spirit. روح القدس نمایانگر روح القدسه. That's not exactly what Scripture says. ولی این چیزی نیست که کلام خدا میگه. Okay, the the lampstand itself. این چراغدان. The lampstand itself is the church. چراغدان نمایانگر کلیساس. The seven lamps that are burning on top of it. اون هفت شوله که بر روش قرار داره. That is the Holy Spirit in His fullness. اون روح القدس نمایانگر روح القدس در کمالش است. Okay. And 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 it says here that they light whatever is in front of it. با اینکه اون نورش باید جلو جلو رو روشن می‌کرد. If we if we look at the tabernacle, اگه بخوایم به خیمه عبادت نگاه بکنیم. I'm going to do a rough drawing here of the tabernacle. من الان ساده خیلی می‌کشم. Um you you have the outer court. در واقع اون حیات بیرونی هستش. Okay, you have the outer court and and you have this um You have this altar where they are making sacrifices. And then you have this this laver, this this uh, big this bowl that's full of water. Where they would wash after this after the after the sacrifice. And then you had this interior part that was broken up into two pieces. This first place is called the holy place. And there's three things that are inside of this. There is an altar where they burn incense. There is a table where there is bread. called the bread of his presence or the, the or the show bread. And there is a candlestick or a lampstand. The lampstand was directly opposite of the bread. چراغدان در مخالف اون میز نان قرار داشت. Jesus is the bread of life. عیسی اون نان حیات هست. And the church با کلیسا is called to manifest the fullness of the spirit. خونده شده که نمایانگر هفت روح خدا باشه. The seven lamps of fire که هفت شعله و چراغ And they are they are positioned in a way where they light they put light on the bread. که یک جوری طراحی شدن که بخوان اون نور رو بر جلو جلو رو روشن بکنن که در واقع نان هستش. That the Holy Spirit that's upon us. که روح القدسی که بر ما قرار گرفته. Reveals to us who Jesus is. به ما نشون میده که عیسی کی هست. It reveal he reveals the bread of life to us. نمایانگر نان حیات هست. But then also We reveal the bread of life to society. همچنین ما این نان حیات رو به مردم نشون میدیم. That the fullness of the Spirit on your life. وقتی که اون روح کامل خدا بر روی شما قرار گرفته. Shows humanity who Jesus is. به انسان ها نشون میده که عیسی چه کسیه. Amen. Amen. And and then of course you have the veil. بعد اینجا پرده هست. And behind the veil. Was the the Ark of the Covenant? A pushed the parde, tabute tabute ahtast. Where the 
cherubim's wings faced each other and the, and the, man, the manifest glory of God would okay everybody with me so this is a picture of the tabernacle all right uh, there's a lot we could say about this uh, there's, there's a lot we could say <laughs> uh, we have to move on though is that right yeah so we just keep going. Did I did I go over my time? I'm sorry, I got lost. Sorry. All right. So, um, so so this is this is what what the tabernacle looks like. It's got these three parts. Now now I want to say something about this. In the holy of holies. The 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 manifest glory of God would appear. جلال خدا نمایان بود. The curtains that were surrounding the holy of holies. پرده ای که دور تا دور این اتاق وجود داشت. Had angels all embroidered into the curtains. و فرشتگان در واقع روی پرده پرده هایی که دور تا دور اتاق بودن نقش بسته بودن. So only one person went behind the veil one time a year. فقط یک نفر میتونست وارد اون اتاق بشه و یک بار در سال. And that was the high priest. و اون کاهن اعظم بود. He would take um, he would take incense from this altar and he would put it under the veil into the Holy of Holies and the Holy of Holies would fill with smoke and one time a year he could go in to the Holy of Holies and when he would go in there the manifest the, the, the glory of God would, would shine in there. And on the inside of, of all of that were all these angelic creatures that were sewn into the patterns. And, and so to the Jewish people, the Holy of Holies represented heaven. در واقع برای یهودیان قدس الاقداس یک نمایانگر و یا سمبول بهشت بود. Because, because on, the, on the ark was what was called the mercy seat. Representing the throne of God. So, so this was like heaven. Because this is where God would manifest. The outer court اون حیات بیرونی is uh, in, in their mindset was earthly یک چیز دنیوی و انسانی بود براشون natural یک چیز طبیعی okay so so in the hebrew mindset the holy of holies was heaven پس در ذهنیت یک یهودی این حیات بیرونی یک چیز دنیوی و انسانی بود and the outer court represented the natural or the earthly realm okay so اینجا یک جای بهشتی آسمانی بود و اینجا یک جای زمینی و انسانی. Okay. So, so within the tabernacle پس, you, you have both heaven and earth symbolically represented. پس در این خیمه یک جایی رو داشتیم که هم آسمان رو در واقع نشون میداد و هم دنیا رو و زمین رو. But this holy place ولی حالا این قسمتی که قدوس بود this holy place that, that had the, the bread the the menorah or the lampstand and the, and the altar of incense it was positioned between heaven and earth it was positioned between the natural and the spiritual realms the holy place was was designed to function or, or it was touching both the natural and the spiritual dimensions. این مکان مقدس یه جایی قرار داشت که هم اون قسمت زمینی و دنیوی رو لمس می‌کرد و همون قسمت آسمانی رو. This is a picture of the church. این نمایانگر کلیساست. There's a lot of pictures we could see here but this is one of them. خیلی تصاویر دیگر رو می‌تونیم اینجا ببینیم ولی این تصویر یکی از اون‌هاست. See the, the, the church کلیسا operates within a realm that can touch both the earthly and the heavenly at the same time. در واقع کلیسا در جای عمل میکنه که هم میتونه در واقع آسمان رو لمس بکنه و هم جای دنیوی رو و دنیا رو. 
That we, we are called to function in both realms. We are the only creation of God given access to both spiritual places and natural places at the same time. ما تنها خلقت خدا هستیم که به ما این توانایی و دسترسی داده شده که بخوایم هم آسمان رو لمس بکنیم و هم زمین رو لمس بکنیم و تجربه کنیم. This is where you operate. اینجا جایی که شما عمل می‌کنید. You're seated with Christ. با عیسی بر تخت نشستید. At the same time that you're walking in the earth. در این حال هم بر روی زمین راه می‌رید. You live between both realms. This is part of being priests and kings. Right. This is part of being priests and kings. Priests have access to the presence. کاهنها میتونن دسترسی داشته باشن به جایی که مقدس و قدوس هست. Kings have dominion in the earth. و پادشاهان کسایی هستن که بر روی زمین سلطنت میکنن و حاکم هستن. You're called to walk in both. و شما خونده شدید که در هر دو قسمت حرکت بکنید و راه برید. Are you getting this? متوجه هستید؟ This makes sense. معنی میده؟ We're This is this is a small picture of of what you carry. این یک تصویر خیلی کوچیکی از اون چیزی که شما حمل می‌کنید. That Jesus, listen, Jesus, it says that when he died, something happened. عیسی وقتی که مصدوب میشه یک چیز اتفاق افتاد. Something happened to the veil. یک چیزی بر اون پرده اتفاق افتاد. It was removed. برداشته شد. So that now You, you and I can see into the holy of holies. You and I can experience the holy of holies. Not one time a year. Every day. Every moment. As much as you want. That you now have access to the very weighty presence of God. الان شما دسترسی دارید به اون حضور عالی و پر جلال خدا. I don't feel it. احساسش نمی کنم. You don't feel your brain right now. الان مغز تو احساس نمی کنی. Does it mean it's not there? نه در واقع نمیشه که اونجا نیست. The, the, the thing is this is that is that God has made this available to where now I can see in the spirit. I can experience the dimension of the of the spirit realm. I can experience heavenly places. And, and I can take what I've experienced in God over here. و اون چیزی رو که در اینجا در حضور خود تجربه میکنم and i can bring it to the earth around me بتونم بیارم به دنیای اطرافم because what i walk what, what i experience in heavenly realms به خاطر اینکه اون چیزی رو که در دنیای روحانی تجربه میکنم is not just an encounter فقط یک ملاقات نیست it's not just an experience فقط یک تجربه نیست it's something that i carry back to the earth یه چیزی که با خودم حفظ میکنم و میارم به زمین I carry what I've experienced in heaven. I bring that to society. I bring that to people's lives. That the joy that I encounter in Him, I can bring to those who are in crisis. That the things I've seen in God, I can bring to those who are blind. میتونم بیارم برای کسایی که کور هستن. Does that make sense? معنی میده؟ So so you're called to live in both. پس شما خونه شدید که در هر دو قسمت عمل بکنید و زندگی بکنید. Amen. Amen. So so this is this is what we do. we we are seeing Jesus. و اینجا عیسی رو میبینیم. Because of the Holy Spirit. به خاطر روح القدس. And we are revealing Jesus. و ما داریم عیسی رو نشون میدیم و نمایان میکنیم. We're called to illuminate him to society. و باید اون رو بلند بکنیم و برافروزیم. If we don't reveal Jesus by the light of the Holy Spirit. اگه ما عیسی رو نشون ندیم با روح با چراغ روح القدس. 
How will the nation see him? پس چه جوری قوم ها بتونن ببیننش؟ This is more than just knowledge. و این خیلی بیشتر از فقط یک اس اطلاع. Intellectual knowledge. یک اطلاع. This is something you get to experience. یه چیزی که میتونید شما تجربه بکنید. Amen. Amen. So, so let's let's look at this. Um, <clears throat> we we talked about the, the seven spirits in Isaiah 11:2. در مورد هفت روح در اشعیا و باب 11 صحبت کردیم. And and it says here Uh, okay, how are we going to write this? I'm going to need you to write this, okay? Um, the first thing that we saw in Isaiah 11:2 is the Spirit of the Lord. He's the centerpiece. So if somehow you can write Spirit of the Lord. So in German you see Ruhe Choda. Where is it? Yeah, you want the black one? You can erase the whatever yeah. you need to erase. Yeah. My beautiful drawing. <laughs> so. All right, so the spirit of the Lord is the centerpiece. Okay. In now, resmate basati. Now notice after the spirit of the Lord in Isaiah 11:2 after it mentions the spirit of the Lord, notice it mentions all of them in pairs. Ba age deqat bekonid hamashun ro do to do to dare mige dar mored haf ruh khoda. And he says, Now, and, and you look at these branches. They're connected. The branch on the left is connected to the branch on the right. There are six branches that come out from the middle, but they're connected. So what we see in Isaiah 11:2 is he says, He says the spirit of the Lord who is the centerpiece. And then he says the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. And the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Did you get that? متوجه شدین؟ Okay. I don't just write like wisdom. If you can write wisdom right here. Mm-hmm. Understanding. Should we should we widen that one or it's okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Counsel and might. And might right here. knowledge and fear of the lord i don't know how you're going to do that but <laughs> i got to completely destroy oh, your tabernacle oh no you erased my heaven <laughs> so we can't do this yeah like this. if you want to put arrows or whatever yeah so this one comes here and then what was the uh, knowledge and Not the fear of the lord this. so Okay. It took us all day but we're finally finding out what the seven spirits of God are, okay? و خوشبختانه تازه داریم میفهمیم که هفت روح خدا چی هستن. So so you got the one center post which is the spirit of the Lord. پس یک قسمت میانی هست که روح خداست. And then you have from the center six branches. و از اون قسمت میانه میبینیم شش تا شاخه اومدن بیرون. And they're all connected. Why six branches? Because the Lord was showing that He is going to operate. What does the number six represent? Man. And son. What day was man created in Genesis? Day six. Six is the number of man. Why are there six branches? Because God is showing that that the Holy Spirit is going to function through man. And and only by staying connected to the center post. Is, is man made complete? 
Okay? He, it's like this is the vine and we are the branches. و این در واقع میشه گفت این این اون قسمت اصلی درخت هست و اون ما شاخه ها هستیم. Did you get that? متوجه شدید؟ Okay? All right. So So these work together. پس اینها با هم دیگه کار میکنن. The reason they're mentioned in pairs. و دلیلی که جفت جفت بهشون اشاره شده. Is because they work together. به خاطر اینکه با هم دیگه کار میکنن. Wisdom and understanding. حکمت و فهم. Um, what do I say? Counsel. 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 Sorry. And might. Uh, counsel and might. مشورت و قوت. And knowledge and the fear of the Lord. معرفت و ترس خداوند. They work together. با هم دیگه کار میکنن. All right. And and one of the things I was talking about earlier. This is a this was used uh, with almond the almond tree symbolism. It had a specific number of almond flowers. Almond buds and almond blossoms. Okay. In, in other words, like like a like a seed, a flower, and a fruit. And you see those over and over and over. The the seed or the or the bud. Uh, the flower. And the fruit. And then it repeats itself. And so this had fruit all over it. همه جا پر از میوه بود. Okay. So so why why the almond tree? چرا حالا درخت بادوم؟ uh, because in Israel the almond tree literally means the watchful tree. What is watching tree? آه, در واقع درخت بادوم در uh, فرهنگ یهودی نمایانگر uh, تم نه دید دیدبانی دیدبانی okay. بود. It it literally means the tree that's waking up. در واقع درختی که winning up waking up. Oh, درختی که داره در واقع بیدار میشه. Because it is the first tree to wake up after winter. به خاطر اینکه اولین درختی بود که بعد از زمستون به حیات می اومد یا بیدار می شد. So so this lampstand پس این چراغدان has all of these symbols from the tree that's awake. در از در واقع از سمبولی از درختیه که همیشه بیداره. Why? چرا؟ Because because the spirit of God is going to rest on a church that's been awakened. The spirit of God is resting on a church whose eyes have been opened. Alright? And and if you want to write this down, you can you can write down Jeremiah 1. Ermia verses 11 and 12. Uh, it's where God is telling Jeremiah, "What do you see?" جایی که خدا از ارمیا میپرسه که چی میبینی. And he sees, he says, "I see the branch of an almond tree." با ارمیا میگه که من شاخه از درخت بادوم میبینم. And and the Lord says, "You have seen well." با خدا بهش میگه که درست میبینی. Because I'm watching over my word to perform it. میگه به خاطر اینکه من بر روی کلام خودم هستم تا اینکه بخوام اون رو عملیش بکنم. We may not catch it in our language. شاید به زبان خودمون خیلی متوجه نشیم. But in the original language. ولی در زبان اصلیش. It's a play on words. در واقع یک بازی با کلماته. He says, what do you see? اون چیزی که می‌بینی. He goes, I see the 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 branch of a seeing tree. و در واقع داره میگه که من چیزی رو می‌بینم از درختی که خودش هم میبینه بیداره. And God says you've seen well. و خدا داره بهش میگه خوب خوب دیدی. Because I'm watching over my word. به خاطر اینکه من دارم نگاه میکنم. So it's a play on words. پس یک بازی با کلماته. So so the signs that there, there are two things with the almond tree. پس دو تا چیز با درخت بادوم هست. Two things that it represents. دو تا چیزی که نمایانگرشون هست. It represents waking up. در در واقع بیداری. Seeing or waking up, bidari va didan, and it represents maturity. Va hamin tor sambol balak budane. The seed going from from just a seed to a flower to fruit. As dane be gol va be mive. Amen. Amen. All right. So so as we awaken in the spirit. Va hamin tor ke dar ruh bidar mishim. As we become awakened to the things of the spirit. Va dar morde chizhay ruhani. 
هوشیار میشیم و بیدار میشیم this is where maturity begins to take place و این چیزیه که اون بلوغ شروع میکنه شکل گرفتن character is important to maturity شخصیت خیلی مهمه برای بلوغ but character alone does not define maturity ولی شخصیت خالی نمیتونه بالغ بودن رو نشون بده because part of maturity قسمتی از بالغ بودن یا بلوغ is that you're waking up to the things that are in the spirit realm در واقع نشون میده که شما دارید بیدار میشید به اون دنیای روحانی اطرافتون we must become a people who are more in tune in the spirit than we are in the natural باید انسان های تبدیل بشیم که بیشتر و بیشتر توجه ما به چیزهای به دنیای روحانی و روح هستش تا انسانی و جسمانی does that make sense آیا معنی میده Okay. So so there's a lot of symbolism we could talk about. خیلی سمبل های مختلفی هست که میتونیم در موردش صحبت بکنیم. Things that I I I'm not going to be able to get into just for the sake of time. چیز هایی که در واقع وقت نداریم بهش برسیم. But the prophetic picture here ولی اون تصویر نبوتی که میتونیم ازش بگیریم is that the 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 lampstand اینه که چراغدان Who's the lampstand? چراغدان کیه؟ Yeah. Yeah. Take your finger like this. انگشتتون رو اینجوری بگیرید. And when I say who's the lampstand? وقتی میگم چراغدان کیه؟ I want you to do this. میخوام اینجوری بکنیم. All right, so let's do this. Ready? دوباره از اول. Who is the lampstand? چراغدان کیه؟ Right here. You're the lampstand. شما اون چراغدان هستید. Designed by God. که با خدا طراحی شدید. patterned by God for the spirit for the spirit to remain upon برای اینکه روح بتونه بر شما قرار بگیره for the fullness تا اون کمال the sevenfold spirit of God روح هفتگانه خدا to rest upon you که بر شما قرار بگیره so that you can reveal Jesus که شما بتونید عیسی رو آشکار کنید و نمایان کنید first you can see Jesus پس اول باید عیسی رو ببینید and second so you can reveal Jesus. که بعداً بتونید عیسی رو نمایان کنید. آمین. آمین. And, and the prophetic picture we see of the lampstand. و که از این چراغبان می‌بینیم is that it's full of watching and seeing. پر از در واقع تماشا کردن و دیدن هست. Remember what were the what were one of the descriptions of the seven spirits? یکی از چیزهایی که در مورد هفت روح شدیم چی بود؟ Seven eyes. هفت چشم. All right? And so oh lord how much do we want to get into? How many more sessions do we have after this? Uh, I guess two more. Two more after this? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, does this make sense? Yeah. All right. 50 50. Th- this is important here. The Spirit of the Lord. And then the re- these other ones work together. And we're going to see later how they work together. و بعدا می‌بینیم که اینها چطور با هم دیگه مربوط هستن و کار می‌کنن. And we'll look at biblical examples of how they work together. و مثال‌های کتاب مقدس رو می‌تونیم ازش بهش اشاره بکنیم. Because might always comes after counsel. به خاطر اینکه قوت همیشه بعد از مشورت میاد. Fear of the Lord always comes after the knowledge. و ترس خداوند همیشه بعد از معرفت میاد. All right? And, and, and so these work together. پس اینا با هم دیگه کار می‌کنن. These different operations of the Holy Spirit. و این عملکردهای مختلف روح القدس هستن. This is what Jesus operated in. این چیزی که عیسی عمل می‌کرد. And he says this is what you're called to operate in. و این چیزی که میگه شما خوانده شدید که بخواید عمل بکنید درش. Amen. Amen. And 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 the only way for this to happen is for us to stay connected to the main source. طوری که می‌تونیم اتفاق بیفته اینه که ما بتونیم به اون منبع اصلی وصل باشیم. We've been we've been connected to the vine. و ما به اون شاخه اصلی وصل باشیم. You know, I was walking out here and I saw I saw the grapes. وقتی اشنا مازیم رد می شدم، اون درخت انگور رو دیدم. I saw a small cluster of grapes. یه خوشه کوچیک از انگور. That were on the branch. که روی شاخه بود. Those grapes. و اون انگورها. Are a physical manifestation. در واقع نمایانگر فیزیکی. Of what is hidden in the vine. نمایانگر فیزیکی چیزی است که توی اون شاخه پنهان شده. There are grapes in the vine. پس اون انگورها در شاخه وجود داره هست. I don't mean literally. منظورم یعنی تحت لفظی نیست. I'm talking about there 
all of the substance ولی همه اون چیزهایی که اون انگور رو تشکیل میده درست the, میکنه the DNA اون دی ان ایش that's in the vine که در شاخه هست manifests from the branches در واقع شکوفا میشه توی اون شاخه ها so when the branches manifest these grapes وقتی که این خوشه ها یا این شاخه ها به انگور تشکیل میشه تبدیل میشه the branches are manifesting the fullness of what's hidden in the vine اون شاخه ها دارن نشون میدن که در شاخه چی وجود داره با اون میوه که هست jesus is the vine عیسی اون تا که حقیقیه we are the branches ما شاخه هاش هستیم and we are called to manifest و ما خونده شدیم که بخوایم نمایانگر the fullness of what's in the vine کمال اون چیزی باشیم که در تاک وجود داره amen amen you're called to to display to put on display پس باید نشون بدید what's hidden in the vine اون چیزی که در تاک قرار داره یا محفوظه i told you in the beginning از اول بهتون گفتم This is not something I just want to teach. این چیزی نیست که من بخوام همینطوری فقط تعلیم بدم. This is something I want to live in. این چیزی که میخوام درش زندگی بکنم. This is something I want to experience every day. چیزی که میخوام هر روز تجربه بکنم. This is something I want to grow in every day. چیزی که میخوام هر روز درش رشد بکنم. There, there are many times there is a distance between what we know and what we're experiencing. بعضی وقات یک فاصله ای هست بین اون چیزی که ما میدونیم و تجربه میکنیم. In other words we know this is available in God. بعضی وقات میدونیم که این در خدا هست. But we're not seeing the fullness of it yet. ولی هنوز اون کمالش رو نمیبینیم. We have a choice. حالا یک انتخاب داریم. Believe what we see in the natural. باور کنیم اون چیزی رو که در حالت طبیعی میبینیم or believe what we know to be true in the spirit یا باور کنیم اون چیزی که در میدونیم در روح حقیقت داره amen amen stand with me for a moment please سر پا بایستیم لطفا for everyone that's here برای همه شما که اینجا هستید everyone that's watching or listening و هر کسی که تماشا میکنن از طریق ویدیو or through the video or through the internet I just I just want you to receive right now میخوام که آماده باشید که دریافت بکنید in the name of Jesus در نام عیسی I declare over you اعلان میکنم بر روی تو you are the lampstand of God تو چراغدان خدا هستی you have been designed تو طراحی شدی you have been formed by God تو شکل داده شدی با خدا از طریق خدا to carry the fullness of the holy spirit که بخوای کمال روح خدا رو حمل بکنی and to manifest that fullness و بخوای نشانگر اون کمال روح باشی everywhere you go هر جا که میری you will shine the light of the spirit on jesus روح خدا نمایانگر اون نور روح خدا باشی seeing him ببینی knowing him بشناسی and making him known to the world و او رو به دنیای خودت بشناسونی in the name of jesus در نام عیسی مسیح آمین آمین آمین